Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Itesh and today we are going to learn some basics of Maya. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to explain how you can efficiently use multi-cut tool. So we're going to start with this cylinder. So you can go to mesh tool and select this multi-cut here. Or what you can do is you can press shift right click and it will show you all the options here and you can select the multi-cut and by clicking on this box icon it will show you the options of multi-cut tool so we have all these options here and let's go through them one by one so to use multi-cut tool you just select on any edge or any surface like this and then you can keep clicking and adding more vertices and you can change the topology like this So you want to make some cuts here. What you can do is you can just click anywhere on the edge or what you can do is you can click and hold on the edge and then you can slide your vertex to move it along this edge like this. So you want to snap your final vertex to exactly this one. What you can do is you can just click anywhere on this edge and then drag it up. And when it's snap, you can just release and it's going to attach itself to the vertex and we're going to make the final connection. So I'm going to delete all these and let's go through the this tool panel. So we have this snap step. So what does it mean uh, when you use multi cut tool? So what you can do is so if you press shift, you can just create a edge loop like this. But if you want a edge loop like this or in the inclined position, you can use this snap step. So what it does, if you press shift and just drag your mouse, you can rotate to whichever position you want this cut to be. So the gapping between the cuts or you can say the rotation gap between the cuts is decided by that snap step. So if I keep the value to 10, you can see the gap between the rotation is smaller. But if I increase the number, let's say 45, it's going to change the gapping between the rotation to 45 degrees. So if I press shift and click on my mouse button, and now if I move this up, then you can see the rotation is bigger and bigger so you can decide the rotation value by this snap step now let's talk about the smoothing angle so if you know about the hardness of an edges in maya it works the same way so if your smoothing angle is set to 180 then your cuts are going to be smooth but if it's set to zero then it's going to show you some hard edges so if my smoothing angle is set to 180 and if i create a cut like this And let's go back to object mode. Then you can see that we don't have any hard edges. We still have this topology, but the edges are just fine. But if I turn down the smoothing angle to zero and let's say make another cut here. Then it's going to show you the hard edges. So if I go to object mode, then you can see the difference. Now on this side, the smoothing angle was zero. So we're going to see some hard edges like this, but on this side, the smoothing angle was 180. So we don't have the issue of hardened edges here. So you can change this according to whatever you are working on. The next thing is edge flow. So let's add a uh, edge loop first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold control and uh, it will add an edge loop in your shape so you can press and hold control and hover your mouse or your object and it will show you this edge ring and it will show you this edge loop and you can press left mouse button to add this loop anywhere you want like this now if i select this edge and scale this up i go back to my multi-cut tool 
turn on edge flow and if I add one edge loop here, it's going to change the shape according to this scale we just changed. So if I add one edge here, it's going to keep the shape like this. So if we add more loops like this, it's going to keep changing the shapes and keep this round topology. And it works same for any shape you want. For example, if I change the scale like this and then add edge loops and it's going to work like this so you can just again scale this and add more loops like this now let's talk about the subdivision so when i click at an edge and we try to make a connection like this you can see that there is no subdivision between this edge we just added if i go to vertex mode then there's this vertex and the end one so there's no vertices in the middle so what i can do is i can take a multi cut tool and increase the number of subdivisions so if i want like three vertices what i can do is i can just select this and this and then you'll see that when i change the subdivision value it added two more vertices in this edge so you can increase the number of values like this. So if I go here and here, then you'll see the number of vertices are increased. And now we have this ignore back faces. So if I go to front view and I turn this on and I add a cut like this. So what's going to do is, is going to add the cut only to visible faces. So we only had these faces visible to us. So it added the cut to only these faces and ignored the faces on the back. So you can use this in your workflow if you are looking for something like this. So the next option is delete back faces. So I'm going to turn this on and again add a cut like this. So what it will do is that it's going to delete the upper portion of this cylinder like this. So if I make a selection here, then it will delete the faces on top of this selection like this. So how we can define which area to be deleted and which area is to be kept. So if we press and hold shift and drag this mouse from left to right, it's going to show this dotted line, which is going from down to up. That means the area above this line is going to be deleted. But if I press and hold shift and drag my mouse while selecting my left mouse button from right to left, then you'll see this dotted line is reversed. Now the area below this line is going to be deleted. So you can just move your mouse from left to right if you want to delete the upper portion and right to left if you want to delete the lower portion. So the next option is extract faces. So what it does that, so if I press and hold shift and make a selection like this, it's going to extract the faces like this. And again, it works on the same principle. If I drag my mouse from left to right, it's going to extract the upper part of the area. And if I drag my mouse from right to left, it's going to extract the lower faces like this. So multi-cut tool also works as a supporting edge tool. So instead of using insert edge loop tool, what you can do is you can use multi-cut tool. If you press control, it will give you this edge loop option and you can add edge loops like this. Just like you use insert edge loop tool to add supporting edges. It's going to work the same. So that's it for this video and I hope you learned something new and if you did then make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.